All right, guys, so we are at Wagner Motorsports Park, and Nick had the parachute um, blossomed, I guess. Um, it was wet when we left last weekend, so we didn't pack it all back up. And we left it open, like, over the wing so that it could dry. So we're just going to do a little video. You ready? What? Pack the parachute. Show these folks what it's about. Yeah, sure. So, guys, going. we use a parachute, and uh, we'll be putting a dual parachute setup on this car. Um, now a dual parachutes are needed over 160 in the eighth or something like that, legally wise, and over 200 in the quarter. Now we're not going quite that fast. Um, we run pretty dang good, but we're not, we haven't been there yet. I think we could get there. Um, not 200 in the quarter. We don't run this car quarter mile. We only do eighth mile stuff. Um, but, um, for us on a lot of the tracks that we race on are bumpy, short shutdowns and we're racing. The, yeah. the hours of the night that we race at a lot of times the dew sets in especially in the fall time here so having a dual shoot setup is a um guaranteed that you're gonna have at least one shoot open right not guaranteed but like the Better chances, chances. Of, the chances of two shoots of not opening or deploying is very minimal and there's multiple reasons why a shoot won't deploy um shoots won't deploy because uh uh want to do it yeah we could do it let's come over here well so, the first so this like, is this is a friend of ours car, um, a guy that we ran drag week with and stuff like that, okay? And he has a regular um, regular parachute, pilot chute, they call it. So there's gonna be a little spring in there and uh, a small, Where? it's not on the car right now, oh. but it's called a pilot chute, okay? So you put the bag in first, show the bag over here. Oh. You'll put the bag in first, okay? You get it folded up, you put the bag in, and then you put this little spring on top of it. So it'll be the, the, the parachute itself, then the spring, and then the bag, okay? Well, the spring, well, you deploy the chute and the spring pops out and it drops. It drops on the ground here, okay? And then the car's accelerating, the spring's on the ground and like the air just catches it and blossoms the chute, okay? On a spring launcher chute like we have, um, spring launcher or air launcher, we'll go over there and I'll talk about it shortly. A spring launcher gets a, a, the parachute up over and into the clean air. So you put, you mount the parachute on like a 15 degree angle or so, 20 degree angle. So the, the parachute um, actually comes up into the air and catches clean air that's coming over the vehicle. So like a vehicle like this right here, okay? It's a truck body. So you have a lot of dead air and uh, like spinning air at behind the cab. And then he's got this uh, tailgate deal here, right? So this right here actually creates a vacuum, okay? On the back here. So if you were standing right here, the, this air is not moving at all and it is very likely to be sucking um, back towards the car, okay? So you'll see incidents, or you'll see you'll see big tire cars that have wheelie bars, they'll have nets on them. The reason for that is when the chutes deploy, so they can't get wrapped up in the wheelie bars because there's a vacuum behind the car. It's very similar to like NASCAR racing, and you'll see NASCARs or circle track racing where they draft people, okay? Drafting um, is beneficial because it clears the air, right? Like we gotta push these cars through the air. And when you're pushing a car like these old cars like this, through the air at 150 miles an hour, um, 160 miles an hour, you gotta move a lot of air. But by moving that air, it creates that suction on the back side of it. And in like a, in a circle track racing incident or uh, a realm or whatever, it, it pulls that car along with you. So you'll see like on the last lap at Daytona or something like that, the number two car, number three car, will slingshot themselves and come around the other cars. That's because they're racing at full throttle. They're pushing the guy ahead of them, but pushing the guy to a certain point. But they're at full throttle going as fast as they can. And the but vacuum's pulling them harder than they Then the vacuum's pulling them, okay? And then when they slide outside the car, they have this clean run um, because everything's loaded up and they can accelerate faster because they just weren't pushing through air for 500 miles. They weren't pushing, moving all that air. And also like in an incident like that or drafting type deal, you're using less fuel and everything else like that because you don't have to break the air. Um, very similar to like when you jump into a, jump into a lake, if you've jumped um, from high levels into a lake that's flat, um, breaking that surface is, is hard. But once that surface is broken, it's very easy, a lot easier to get into the water, right? As far as like your impact. Now, I'm just trying to tie that into different realms, but it's all the same thing. Air, air, water, liquid, all that stuff has very, um, it's elastic, right? 
um, if I like, if there's a vacuum here and I pull this here, um, I feel it here, even though I never touched it, right? Because there's the air, I moved the air that was here by moving this hand away because there was, it's got stuck, right? It's elastic. Same thing with like- So as long um, as the space is there for it to move, it's gonna move. Yeah, because like everything wants to be in balance, right? Yeah. Um, the pressure here at this hand and the pressure here at this hand want to be the same. I bring them real close, okay? And like the air pressure here and here is the same, but I create the quick vacuum there. There was like a little bit of a dead space right there, right? So yeah. the air that was around here came in here. And if you did it with like a smoke, in a smoke room or like in a fog room, you well, see that. Like when somebody does a burnout and they're fanning the door to get the smoke out of the car. Well, a lot of That's people, like a lot of people don't fully understand the concept there, right? So when you create the vacuum, you gotta give it a second for the air to come out. Yeah. You'll see people going like this, right? And, and like, it's just like, it's just like whoa, 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 the air ain't moving over. So if you go like quick, pull it hard and leave it open then, for a second, and then the air, it creates a vacuum and then the air comes Pulls out. The smoke so out. you don't wanna be like, if you're, if you're trying to let the smoke, the burnout smoke out of a car, you do it like, you go pull out and you sit it. And then like, the, you'll see the air come out. And then you push it in and then you pull it out. Yeah. And then and you gotta give it a second so like, you'll see the smoke in the car, like it's visible. So the air, when you see the smoke stop moving, you go and do it again, yeah. right? Yeah. Or when you see it slow down to like an extreme. But, so like a pilot shoe with a, like a dead space here, is very likely to sit on the ground for an extended period of time. Just sit here until it catches enough air to deploy. Now that delay is uh, extensive, okay? That, that delay is uh, a whole lot longer um, from the moment you deploy the chute until the parachute opens up, all right? So we can't run a chute like that. And uh, they have their their they have their uh, their place in the motorsports industry, but they're not ideal. So like a spring launcher or an air launcher, um, the air launcher and spring launcher, they're both launcher style parachutes. Uh, air one is lighter because all it is is an air ram and not a big heavy metal uh, spring, spring steel. So, um, but both those, help throw the chute up in there and catch it. So we'll be switching to dual chutes um, so we can get slowed down and have a much more stable area. So a parachute, not only does it slow you down, it keeps the car straight, okay? So like when we're racing somewhere where it's like bumpy or sketchy, yeah, I'll say it, bumpy or sketchy or dewy or um, whatever, like if there's a, uh, whatever it could be, right? If any any type of circumstances, if your parachute's open, transition or transition whatever, yeah. or whatever. If your parachute is open, and like let's say you lock up your brakes, right? Your car's gonna go straight. If your parachute is open and you uh, the car's bouncing, the car's gonna bounce straight, okay? Especially with a big tire car. Let's show here. So on like a big tire car, um, let's say this is a 30 inch tall tire with a 15 inch wheel, okay? That means you got seven and a half inches. Of, uh, of distance here, okay? That seven and a half inches versus like a 28 inch tall tire, right? 15, 28, uh, come on, I'm gonna look stupid here. It's like three to four inches, four inches? Whatever it is, okay? It's a whole lot smaller. And the sidewall here, you run less tire pressure in a big tire, generally speaking, so the car will start bouncing, okay? If you get into a upset situation, having the parachute. If you get into what? A upset situation, like you're going through the pumps or through a transition or something like that, the wheel will bounce inside the tire and the car can start bouncing. Having the parachute open will keep the car straight so that you'll. Sorry guys, we're at a racetrack here. So um, you'll see a big tire car that doesn't do it, deploy the parachute, the parachute doesn't open, the car starts bouncing. And next thing you know, it's doing like a solemn skiing thing where the back end is just like boom, boom, boom. And then you gotta whack the throttle or something like that to try to get the tire to go back to a circle, spin the tire and like on the ch chassis down. Like you gotta try, you gotta, you gotta try to do something. You have to try to do something. So, um, that's a quick rundown on parachutes and stuff like that, I guess. So we'll be going to a dual parachute setup just so we have the ability to slow the car down at a faster rate. So, uh, all right. So you said you have what style here? This is a spring launcher. This is a spring launcher. You got a little can here. We got this little guy here. Um, this is a deal a buddy of mine made for me. Um, you could also put, they're designed. Some of them are like they're designed that like you drill a hole in here and uh, there's a little metal 
hole here, right? And you'd put like a hole like this in there to keep it straight. Oh, but, well, uh, you're cranking it back. Yeah, but this is I a parachute you. that went through the fire, so um, a buddy of mine, Bob Bauer, gave me a, a bag and a, a chute set up off his uh, top sportsman car because uh, he's fast and they replace their chutes every couple years. Um, but I had to go and remake a plate and stuff like that because the aluminum melted right off the parachute deal. So I had to go make remake all this here. So, long story short, I didn't. I never drilled the hole, so I just stabilized it with my knee once I get the thing starting to get to this point. This is what's gonna. This is what's gonna throw the shoe into the air. He pulls his handle, which is inside the car, and it. So, uh, yep. And this little pulls that this out guy of the goes bag. Inside here. Pull, so, it goes in the bag. So I can do it manually with the parachute. I can do it with a button, or the uh, Davis Technologies VPS system that we have on this car um, will automatically activate that button, essentially, um, through the VPS system. Activate the solenoid. To deploy the air cylinder that I fabricated up on the deal, so it will be a it's an automatic deployment system in case the car is getting uh, crooked or like at war in the woods that we raced last weekend. I had the VPS system um, deploying the car at X um, at uh, what was it at X amount of time. So uh, you can do a time based. Um, actually, no, you can do a distance based, time based, mile an hour based. Actually, over the weekend. We're doing a mile an hour based. And uh So over the weekend we were doing a mile an hour based through the Holly system. So at uh at anywhere from 125 to 130 miles an hour the chute was deploying and uh by like our rate of acceleration I know that the chute will be blossomed uh ideally just like 20 feet past the finish line. 20 to like 20 to 40 feet past the finish line. If like if the pass is on par. You could also do a distance based with the VPS system. So at 600 feet or 640 feet, um, the chute opens up and uh, the chute is blossomed just past the just past the uh, mile an hour. Theory. Bro, why are you yelling? Because the car was just running. I know. Okay. I know. Why, are you, why are you busting my chops? So uh, I have to. So in the last run we ran, I bumped it actually down to 125 miles an hour, which is uh, significantly lower because the parachute was starting to get damp. Uh, the dew was setting in and the parachute was kind of wet and like when the parachute gets isn't fully dry It takes a little bit longer to blossom and uh, I probably missed it by 10 feet and I'm pretty sure the parachute was blossomed um, When that guy nipped us, but I had to pedal, pedal it anyway, so like yeah One or the other would, would probably would have kept us or probably kept, would have kept us in the race, but I'm gonna go through here and uh, There's all these straps here you can go through Make sure everything's straight. Make sure it's all straight. Go through. And you can see all the straps are nice and straight. Yep, nice and okay. straight. I nice approve. and straight. So I approve. So now I'll come out here. I want to shake them out. We're Get at Wagler Moore's Park. Get all it's the just, stones out. We're at Wagler Moore's Park, Park today and like the, this track is pretty stones but you got you want to make sure like the stones and stuff like that are on your parachute so I'll come through here and I fold it up trifold like that I go up here I usually bring it back to the car and you fold it like a pizza like a pizza yeah right that's a pie okay apple pie okay so you fold it like fold it like that so it's about the distance of the parachute and then you back fold it. Hold it here and here. Just like that. So now we got a nice, a nice shaped parachute. 
right here. I've never seen so many diesels in one event. Well, we're at Wagler Motorsport Park right now. Wagler's the I know, I know. That's crazy. So, so now I got this all folded up nice, and it's about the distance of the bag. So I go through. standard of how long the tether has to be for the parachute um uh, so someone like a, a company that like makes parachutes they'll spec out the parachute for you per car uh not per car but for like the uh, application you're doing right so like weight the weight of the car the et of the car um the style of the car um like a dragster right a dragster and uh a dragster and a like a door car need different parachutes right. right they'll both slow a car down but then ideally they'd have some different parachutes so guys like you gotta keep these deals here like that and you want to do it so like when it comes out it comes out nice and uh, smooth as butter smooth as butter right sure so get this all in here like this so guys i'll do this in like literally like a couple minutes when we're not doing a video like literally like I have this I usually have this done by the time my data log is downloaded or dang close to it he's pretty quick at it so that sits in there like that okay and then this this cover goes over here so that the that guy right there sits right here and just throws it okay then you got this guy here and like decoration or something I don't freaking know um then since we're wearing Crocs and we don't have shoes, you can't take off your shoelace. So, I use a zip tie. We had a shoelace. But... We had a shoelace, but it got burnt off in the accident. <laughs> we had a couple shoelaces in there. All right, so then you come in here. Pull that in there like that. And there like that. Pull that one up. Pull this one. You can tuck it all in and make it look all nice and pretty. But another thing, if you're running a parachute, you got to make sure that thing is not wet. So if you're driving in the rain or something like that, or this or that, put a girl, or at least put a grocery bag or something over it. So now we'll do this to here. And also, before you get to this point, you want to make sure your parachute handle is returned back to its normal spot. Because it really sucks when you pack a parachute. And you go to put your cable in, and your cable ain't there. It's too short. Yeah. I already pulled it back for you, though. Oh, thank you, Belsey Wales. Has Sorry. anyone ever told you you're a gentleman and a scholar? No, actually. Oh. There's a first for everything, isn't there? What do you think the car is going to do today at the track? ET wise? Uh, well, in my view, more because it's a, it's a really nice surface, right? I, and I mean, we might do a wheelie for the first time because we're going to get to, uh, we're going to try something. It's kind of sticky out there. damn thing. Did I do something with this? I think I wrapped this cord up. Usually this, usually this guy sticks out a little bit longer. There it is. Okay guys, and you get to this point, right? Come on, zoom in. You'll see a lot of people, they'll yank it out, okay? That's not how you do that. You don't use the zip tie either. But when you go to do this, right? You go, and wrap it on the back side 
give it a little bit of a pop and it takes the tension off of it, right? So as soon as you go and pull this, yeah, I kind of did too quick, but it doesn't put the friction. It doesn't put the friction from your string to your string here. And if you do that a whole bunch of times where you just rip it um, without going around, around the cable. It'll wear it and break it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Eventually. Like, and it's, uh, if you're like us, it's going to be happening like the finals or something like that. Now, that circumstance hasn't happened to us, but we just tend it's to... It's the type of luck we have. It's the type of luck we have, like in the finals or semifinals. So, you want to take it off the front side of it and put it on the back side of it. So, you just do a quick wrap job around here, and then you pull it through. And then the string is between the eyelet and the string there, and there's no tension on it then. Then you just come through here and pop it. Then, uh... I usually give it a couple of little whacks. Oh, also, I do it so that I always put it, if the cable's on this side, I do the outer one on this side. If the cable's coming from this side, this one would be on top. We do top, bottom, then either right or left, gotcha. opposite. So that when this pops open, like, it all just like works freely, right? Yeah. When you pop this one, it's like, it's gotta fight against it. It's gotta come across the cable. So like, if your parachute deploys, like you, you deploy your chute, but you don't deploy it all the way, it's a whole lot more likely that it's gonna get stuck that way versus stuck this way. Yeah. Here, it naturally wants to just, like you pop this here, open. it wants to flop it open. It's going in its natural, it's going in its natural, natural orientation. So, there's that. There's a quick rundown on that stuff. A couple different styles of parachutes. Oh, we could show them, let's show them this real quick. Just go through that. So, I did a v video earlier on the, uh, earlier, like, before we brought the car out with the VPS system on here. But this right here is uh, just like a $12 Amazon air cylinder that I fabricated up and put in here. And then we got the, a little uh, Mac valve here. Uh, Holly sells them. Um, I think Low Dollar Motorsport sells them too. We're dealers for Low Mo Dollar. I don't know if they sell the Mac valves actually. But you got the Mac valve and uh, this deal here. And then the VPS system, which is mounted right here, it's a vehicle called the Vehicle Position Sensor. Um, it knows uh, pitch, yaw, roll, all that stuff. So in the Holly system, I could uh, dictate it so that if this sees more than five degrees of uh, yaw, pitch, or, uh, or um, yaw, yaw, pitch, or roll, that it'll activate this solenoid here and uh, deploy this chute. Or I have the blue button right here that is not the scramble button, Nick. I repeat, it's not the scramble button, Nick. I've done that twice now or three times now where I hit the parachute button instead of the scramble button and like it costs us right. So like, I gotta remember this. I might have to watch the video with you guys. So you hit the blue button and as long as the car has a RPM signal, or no, not RPM signal, um, I put a safety in there. Like 20 miles per hour wheel speed or something? Yeah, I think, I think the wheel speed has to be, uh, it has to see like 20 miles an hour with the wheel speed for this button to be activated. Because like when this thing opens up, it opens it up. And I accidentally hit it one time, and like I was sitting like here, and leaning up against the steering wheel, and this thing came across like, it would've like, it would've split my head open. It would've like cracked my skull. So we got 100 PSI of pressure um, sitting here when the when the uh, CO2 bottle's on, and then boom! This thing open, flies open and your parachute goes flying. And you slow yeah. down in time. It's not even recording. You're joking. You better be joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Otherwise, they're going to have a half a video because, like, I ain't really doing this. <laughs> we got to go make some test passes. Okay, panels and whales? Uh, gotcha. Okay. We got to go make some pa test passes because uh, tomorrow we're racing some bad donkeys. I'm hungry. <laughs> Me too. I hope they have food here. All right. Maybe we could find a fellow racer that we could give them, like, $20 for a meal. Guys, we appreciate you appreciate you all for following along um need any uh need any uh anything any products or anything like that reach out to us if you have any questions reach out to us um we're pretty busy we could talk to people all day long on youtube facebook instagram all that crap um if i had the time so like i we do our best to like um keep up with all your guys all the messages and everything like that but uh if uh if we don't respond
problem the first time. There's a possibility we were driving or something like that, and we just didn't get back to you. So uh, don't be afraid to uh, double message us, um, quadruple messages, and like an hour's time span is kind of like, eh, but uh, not recommended. Right? Yeah. Four messages in an hour while we're driving. Yeah. That's not necessarily recommended. Um, but uh, guess what I bought? What? It's this little chocolate covered pretzels. Uh, I do have some chocolate covered pretzels for you. Oh, we're gonna win tonight then. But I'm you joking. should save them for tomorrow. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's more money on the line tomorrow. We gotta save um, them for tomorrow. I bought this little thing that plugs into my phone. It's a microphone. Oh, the noise cancellation. It's not. It, it's like it focuses on like what it's pointed at, I guess. From audio so we'll test that out and see how it works so i don't have like the best speaking but voice are we gonna point it at your voice can i put like my brain in your like your body we'd probably have a lot of views sure i'm trying to stuff you as much full of knowledge as i can but hell we could be big timers if i put my brain in your body yeah, people would actually, have the best of both worlds i actually i'm second guessing that one i'm second guessing that one people don't watch my video for looks <laughs> no we appreciate it guys um Hustling Horsepower and Lady Gangster Racing, follow along. Um, it's been a hell of a journey. We just picked up this trailer and that truck and yeah. We're headed to US 60 tomorrow, so appreciate it guys. We're here at Wegler Moore's Works Park doing some, some stuff with Farm Truck and Asian. And uh, Asian, uh, if you see this video, we appreciate the conversation. Guys, we did not videotape it because uh, some things in life are, uh, some things in life, it's much better to put your phone down and uh, listen to the guys. So Jeff, I, or uh, Asian, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, those guys are cool. They've, uh, they're doing it. They're living it. But they put in the work. And, uh, hey, we're still putting in the work. But, hey, maybe we could get to a point, uh, not quite like that. But, hey, if we could do this journey for a little while with your all support, um, we're out here making memories and we appreciate, uh, you guys following along. And we hope that this journey, um, is a tenth of as fun for you as it is for us. And, uh, we're gonna do our best to, like, uh, Put out the uh, put out the adventure for you guys. So thank you. Um, it's been a hell of a ride. Let's go make some test passes. Screw it. Life short. So go racing. <laughs>